guys welcome back to my channel so it's been like a week or two since i posted and that's because i'm busy with some things but if you follow me on instagram you know i'm still on my usual lifty schedule so anyway i'm just gonna go over what happened in the last few weeks as always i'm gonna include some technique stuff that i've changed or noticed and then i'm gonna talk about what's coming up for me in terms of my lifting and then lastly i'm gonna talk about my romaleos since it's been a year since i've used my romaleos for squatting and benching so i'm gonna talk about how those are holding up and yeah give a one year update on that so after i finished my peaking block which you guys can check out those videos i did another block that i just finished and that's just basically backing things off backing off on my main work doing a little bit more accessory work backing off on specificity aka like competition squat bench and deadlift and doing more variations so i'm at the end of that block and then i'm going to start a new block and that is going to lead up to my mock meet so i'm doing a mock meet in the middle of december i couldn't find like an actual meet that was nearby and matched my time frame and that kind of stuff so i'm doing a mock meet a mock meet is just basically an unofficial meet that i'm going to run by myself to test my numbers and also get practice with going super heavy and commands and all that kind of stuff i'm probably going to go to a powerlifting gym to do that to like use actual competition equipment and then after that i'm going to prep for T Nationals, which is in the end of March this year. And T Nationals this year is where I live. It's like a 40 minute drive, so pretty close. So next I wanna talk about some of the things I did during this past block. So first of all, for squats, I usually do squats on Tuesday and Friday, but for this block, I did temple squats on Tuesday and normal squats on Friday. So I did 400 temple squats. So the numbers just mean how many counts. A count is not necessarily a second, like counts are like one, two, three, while seconds are much longer. So I did 400 count tempo squats. So the first number is how many counts on the way down, which is four. The second number is how many counts you weight at the bottom. So for me, it's zero. So I did not weight at the bottom. The last number is how many counts on the way up. And I also did zero for that. Zero just means normal or like as fast as possible. So 400 is four counts on the way down. And then the rest is the same as a normal squat. So the reason why my coach gave me tempo squats is because with the tempo, I can't put on as much weight on the bar as I usually would. So it's like a different way to use less weight, but maintaining a level of difficulty with the set. Also with tempo squats, it has really helped me maintain a good back angle on the weight down and also make sure every single time I squat, it looks exactly the same. So tempo squats has really helped me out Next thing I added in is close grip bench. So close grip bench is just bench press with my hands narrower than usual. With close grip bench, it's a lot more tricep work. So it's definitely much harder than normal bench, especially for me since I'm used to wide grip benching. And for deadlifts, the variation I did for one of my days is RDLs, Romanian deadlifts. So with RDLs, your knees don't bend as much and it's more hip hinge and it really works my hamstrings a lot i use straps when i do rdls so i can just hold the bar the whole time and not worry about the bar slipping so with rdls you rest at the top instead of the bottom so with deadlifts up down is one with rdls down up is usually one so that's why straps are really useful since i have to hold the bar at the top and i don't reset my grip at the bottom of each rep and i continue to do long pause bench on my deadlift day i really like long pause benching because the bottom is the weakest position on my bench that's usually the place where i fail so i always keep long pause bench in my training and also i still do larson presses and that increases my range of motion and works out that bottom positioning as well because i can't use my legs to arch that much and also without leg drive everything is harder so that helps my bench So those are the main variations I did for my SVD work. So other than that, some of the top numbers I hit during this block, a 240 squat triple at RP 7 to 7.5. And then for bench, I did a 150 bench double at RP 8.5. And then for deadlifts, I did 250 triples. And 
the next week, I did 260 doubles. So those are the main big things that happened during this past block, the block after my peaking block. And I'm pretty excited about what I will hit in the coming block where I'll be doing more singles and working more on strength expression than strength building. So I've been building strength a lot, but now I'm gonna focus on expressing that strength by working on my singles. So now for the shoe update, I have Nike Romolinos 4 and I've been using those for a year now and I use them for squat and bench. So on my day one squat and bench, that's about one to two hours depending on how many sets I have. On my day two, I use them only for my bench and I usually take them off after my main work and use flats on my accessory work because I like flats better for stuff like Bulgarian split squats, push-ups, or even like standing lateral raises. I like having flat shoes. So I do take them off right after I finish bench. So one to two hours on day one. For day two, I use it for bench and that's around like 20 to 30 minutes. On day three, I use it for squat and bench, which is one to two hours and I don't use them on my day four. So on average, around three and a half hours per week. And I'm the type of person who takes care of myself pretty well. So I don't wear these shoes in like dirt or whatever. Actually, I don't walk in and out of the gym with those. I usually walk with my flats. I squat and bench at home. Unless if I squat at the gym, I don't wear these shoes in the parking lot and like that kind of stuff. So this is how it looks like now. I got the white ones, so of course it's a little bit brown right here. Just a tiny, tiny bit since I like protect these shoes pretty well. Everything still works very well. A little bit of color rub off right here and the fabric a little bit breaking right here where there's like a lot of pressure with my feet and also like a little bit of rocks stuck in the grooves of the bottom of the shoe on the other one like the nike logo on the inside rubbed off a little bit because of friction and that kind of stuff but yeah other than that it's still in really really good condition nothing is wrong with them and also i never washed them so the dirt or whatever i could probably just wash off so yeah i would still recommend them they have really helped me with my squat and my bench so in my bench with the heel i can put my feet a little bit closer to my head like in that direction so i can arch a little bit more and just get more leg drive out of it so i like using that when i bench and for squats of course it helps out with my ankle mobility i don't have really bad ankle mobility but it really does help out because i have really long femurs and normal calves or whatever that bone is called so with the heel it kind of balances out my really long femurs my squat looks much more natural with heels i don't lean forward a lot when i use heels actually before i got heels i leaned forward a lot that's probably my body trying to adjust to that more comfortable position so just wearing heels solved that problem of course that's not the case for everyone because everyone's femurs and whatever are shaped differently but yeah i would highly suggest nike or Maleos for heels if you're looking for a squat bench shoe or weightlifting shoe. These are pretty heavy compared to other shoes, but I like having heavy shoes because I feel more grounded in them. Also, the bottom is really stiff, which is really good, which you want for lifting because you don't want to be lifting on cushions. So I usually wear a size nine female for Nike shoes and these Remelays are size nine and they fit perfectly. I have a little bit of space in the front. For lifting, you want your toes to be spread out because you want more surface area on the floor so you have better balance. Because if your toes are squished together, you don't have as much balance and it's really easy to tip either side to side or forward. But when your toes are spread out, then you have much better balance. So I have pretty wide feet and I'm pretty fine with these Romaleos. The length of my feet fits an 8.5 shoe perfectly, but because my feet are wide, nine is the most comfortable for me. And you want to be wearing a comfortable shoe when you're lifting. So yeah, I still highly recommend these Romaleos. I'm not like the biggest Nike fan or whatever. I don't really care about shoe brand, but for lifting, I can say that these are really high quality and they hold up really well. So at the rate I'm using them now, I could probably use them for like five to 10 years. So even though Remaleos are a little bit on the more expensive side for weightlifting shoes, I think it's a worthy investment if you're serious about lifting. Also Nike has a 10% off student discount. Go on their website and like submit a verification of your high school ID or whatever. And then you have a 10% off discount. And also Nike has a really good return policy. Like you can use it and return it. Of course, I don't encourage people to use it and return it just to like save money or whatever. But if you wear it and it's not good, you can actually return it. I think the return period is around 60 days. 
but of course double check that if it's unworn and new you can return it even after the 60 days but even if you wear it you can squat in it bench in it and you just really don't like it and it doesn't fit you or whatever you can return it so there's always that backup if you're not sure if you like them or not so yeah that's pretty much it for this week's video i hope you guys learned something if you guys have any questions make sure to leave them down in the comments below or any videos you want me to make like the video if you did subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss another video thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys soon